God bless you, my friend and sister Sharon. And today we are discussing five things that each one of us that love Jesus needs to know is a form of witchcraft. And I want to I want to help us answer this question. Do you know that's witchcraft? Because my friend, the Bible tells us through Jesus Christ our Lord. And let me be very clear, my friend. This message is for is for followers of Jesus Christ. For people who love God, they love our heavenly Father. You you know and you have accepted that Jesus Christ is Lord. You have asked Christ for forgiveness through the cross and you have a relationship with our Heavenly Father. This is who this message is, friend. Many of us don't know that some of our behaviors is stopping us and blocking us from expressing the kingdom of God because we don't know that we are actually practicing psychological warfare with people that we should not be warring against. We must practice daily forgiveness and we have to learn to choose our battles, lest we be bound up and we're not expressing the kingdom, peace and joy. And you cannot have peace and joy without righteousness. And some of our behavior, friend, is not right. And so the Bible tells us that he that covers his or her sin will not prosper. So God wants us to, to be aware that when you psychologically are attempting to harm people because you are angry at them and you will not tell them what's on your mind, you will not tell them that they hurt you, you will not tell them that you're offended, friend, now you're in violation of the scriptures. You're in violation of what Jesus told us in Matthew chapter 5 verse 24. He said, when you know someone's offended with you or you are offended with them, he said, leave your gift at the altar. In other words, don't try to petition God when you know that you are angry, that you are offended with your neighbor, with your brother, with your sister, your children, your husband, your spouse, your coworker, your parishioners. If you have a ministry gift and you have a church and you are not telling people what's the real deal, I'm offended, that hurt me what you said. Jesus said, don't even come to the father. Go handle that offense, that bitterness. My friend, many of us don't realize that the reason we are so downcast is because we are not being doers of the word. Jesus also told us in Matthew chapter 18, verse 16, he said, when you are offended, go to your brother or your sister and show him or her their fault. So when we take matters into our own hands, friend, and many of us don't realize that we, we, we have come into the kingdom of God, but we are not fighting the good fight of faith by declaring our old nature dead in Christ, that no longer will my old proclivities, my old propensities and habits, how I handle stress and, and being offended, I can't do it the old way no more. We're still working these old weapons that don't work on this side. And so some people, God said, you're dealing with so much heaviness. You don't have any perpetual joy because friend you are full of bitterness anger and some of us have let this stuff fester so long it's hatred so i want to show you my friend five things that you are practicing witchcraft and witchcraft we know in the bible sorcery and witchcraft you can use these words sometimes interchangeably Sorcery is when you take a substance, you smoke it, you drink it, you digest it, or you inject it into your veins. Um, we, we know these as street drugs. That is a form of sorcery and witchcraft. You are using a magic potion to control you. And the Bible teaches us to be vigilant and to be sober because we have an enemy that goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So we don't do anything that puts the body in a stupor.
But the other downside to witchcraft is simply trying to control another human being. Oftentimes when we're doing this, we are trying to hurt them. We, we're trying to punish them. We're actually trying to be God. The Bible tells us when you are offended, start talking. We, th that ain't no time to be on Facebook. That ain't no time to be shopping. That ain't no time to be eating. That's time to now, I got to confront. Because this is what helps the perpetual motion, if you will. The Bible says that the children of Israel went in to dispossess the promised land, which was Canaan. But Canaan was inhabited by these people. They had to dispossess it. So he promised this was a land that flowed with milk and honey, a perpetual flow. You and I, when we are dispossessing the old nature, the old man, your old ways of doing things before you come to Christ, when you cease to dispossess, when you refuse to uncover these areas in your life, my friend, and you will not shine the light of Christ, you will not come to God and keep it real. God, I am easily offended. God, I am full of pride because usually, friends, a lot of the things we're upset with people are about is really petty. And it comes down to many of us. And listen, my friend, remember, you cannot conquer what you will not confess until we can be honest to say, I am full of pride. See, dead people cannot be bothered. So the more alive we are, the easier we are to be offended. And we'll easily say, well, who does Sister Sharon think she talking to? Who does brother to? You don't be talking to me like that. Mm -hmm. See, when you, when you always doing that neck, friend, that's pride. So let's look at it very quickly. Five things that is witchcraft. You are practicing mind control. You are trying to harm people. You're a psychological, really an abuser. You're psychologically trying to abuse someone else. Number one, silent treatment. You know that your girlfriend is trying to contact you. She knows you upset. She's trying to come to you and apologize because she... You already discussed it, and she's trying to. She's texting you. I apologize, sis. I, I, I may have been a little too harsh, and you just ignoring her. Y'all usually talk every day. She ain't. She ain't heard from you in two days. Witchcraft. You are trying to punish her. You're trying to 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 punish him or her. You often see this in marriages. If a person has done something to you, my friend, in your marriage, you got to understand that marriage is not for wimps. If you, if you are married, you must understand that you and your spouse need to have good communication, trust and communication. Communication is the seed to understanding. And if you don't take your trash out on a regular basis, I'm talking about where the two of you make time to just communicate, see what's going on in each other's heart. This thing will overflow. And once your, your trash, because you're not communicating, you're too busy on the job, you're too busy with ministry or whatever is you're too busy, you're not making time for the most important person that you made a covenant with God to exchange and just see where they at. If you're not careful, my friend, that marriage is going to start stinking and everybody around you can smell the stench that this marriage is in trouble because why? You have not been taking the trash out. You are playing all these psychological games with each other. You know, you got women who, as I move to number two, number two is sex games. You play witchcraft in the bedroom. Ladies, let me help you. Yes, we are emotional. But if you withhold the cookies and you, you in your twenties and you withhold and now, I, remember I'm talking to Christians. Now I'm not talking to people that just want to live for the other kingdom. I'm talking to believers. I don't care if your spouse is, is a Christian or not. When it comes to the sex and the cookies, I call them the cookies. You ain't giving it up cause you angry. Oh, you being a foolish bride. If your husband is in his thirties, twenties, and you withholding the cookies with all these naked women all you just throwing your husband to the wolves to be tempted. I don't care how upset you are, sis. Take care of your hubby. Don't send him to work hungry. 
Do you feel me? He should be, the brother should be packing. When he come out the house, you done laid it on the brother so good. Yeah, I'm mad at you, but you about to get it right now. Let's do this. You got to lay it on the brother. You don't withhold sex from your marriage partner. The Bible warns us, do not withhold from your spouse unless the two of you agree. If you mad at your wife, brother, you, now you know you something. If, if a man is withholding the goodies, oh, you need a whooping. Oh yeah, you need a whooping, brother. You don't play games in the bedroom when you are upset. Say it. Especially if your spouse is trying to say, I'm sorry. And you like, he know what he did. And you just go punish him for a whole week. You being arrogant and you being foolish. Oh yes. I've seen many do it. It's a dangerous game to play. That's your hubby. And the two of you, your flesh become one. Get on getting. Number two, sex games. Don't do it. Don't play witchcraft with that. That's dangerous. I can't even express to you how dangerous that one really is, my friend. Number three, pastors, preachers. If you offended and you throwing all these machetes and darts and you throwing all types of daggers, you just like Saul. Saul was throwing javelins at David. You throwing all these daggers from the pulpit. Not only are you being childish, you must understand, friend, you are representing Jesus Christ. And you throwing these daggers in the in the midst of his people? You taking pot shots? Witchcraft. You are dangerous, friend. You got to get to the altar. You got to get that spirit of pride. You got to look, friend, don't make no mistake. That's what it is. Ah, ah, I am ticked off. I'm, mm, ah, 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 we got to kill it. You don't be throwing no darts at nobody from this. Uh-uh. Don't do it, my friend. Number four is <laughs> this one right here. <laughs> Let me help you. Some of y'all, y'all killing y'all's kids. If your kids, first of all, when you forcing a grown man or a grown woman to go to church, you're, you're, you're forcing the gospel. You, you need to repent. You need to get with God. And every time they turn around, I mean, you, you tell the kids, you won't punish me if you don't go to church. Your kids is 15 and 16 years old. In the sight of God, that's not a child. And some of you will say, well, these are the rules of the house. But let me tell you something, my friend. If they ain't got it by now, you got to let them go out and let Satan deal with them. That's what Paul said. Put the man out to church so Satan can deal with him. The man that was sleeping with the man's wife. Or daughter in First Corinthians, I believe Paul said, put them out the fellowship. You forcing, you're you're trying, you're 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 forcing these people to to listen to your gospel music. You forcing them to read the Bible. They 17 and 18 years old. If you have not trained the child up yet, okay, you've been in the kingdom 25 years since they've been in the earth, and you still trying to force this on them, and they're showing rebellion, let them go. Because that is witchcraft. Friend, if you keep forcing and trying to just bang, you going to church. Oh, you going to church. No, because the church is not where we meet God. We meet God here. And the Bible says, watch the principle. The Bible says, if you're married to an unbeliever, if you leave them, how do you know they won't be saved? Through your chaste conversation. He ain't said nothing about you putting up your scriptures all over the house. You're speaking in tongues. You got prayer meetings. The man trying to come home from work. You trying to get him saved. You and the sisters. He can't even get in the house because you got 10 women, wailing women. Y'all come to do some intercession. Y'all... Mm -mm. He, he uh uh. If anything, that person is gonna be like, you know what? She a loony. That's what they gonna say. She a loony. And then they think that you are. I'm telling you, that ain't that ain't the way, my friend. Live it. Be kind. Hold your temper. Keep. If it's a husband or a wife, keep loving them unconditionally. That's your spouse. That's your covenant partner. Show them. Stop talking it and walk it. Show them what it looks like, my friend. Because if you keep doing your little personal, you go, no. You trying to force them to go here, force them to go in it. Don't do that. Witchcraft. The Holy Spirit 
is spirit. And one word of kindness, especially, let me move back to this. Let me move back to number two really quickly. The Lord said, if you're dealing with a spouse that cheated on you, follow me. And you, you decided to stay in the marriage because we want to forgive even infidelity. You can be restored. But if you choose to stay with your spouse and you, you keep playing sex games and don't give them sex, friend, you wrong. If you stay with that cheater and you have chosen to forgive them, let it go. You got to grow up, pick, put your big girl pants on, pick, put your big boy pants on and love them. If not, get out of there because you a witch, you a warlock mistreating that spouse. If you decide to stay, you need to treat them with love and kindness and you need to be consistent. Otherwise, get gone about your way because infidelity is a deal breaker with God. But if you stay, play fair. Amen. So back to number four, when you're trying to force the gospel, friend, you can't be doing that. Th th that will draw them up. That will push them further. Every man must choose his own route. And if they choose your children to be rebellious and acting a fool, go. But ain't going to be no witchcraft practice. And I'm going to get in my secret place and pray and pray that God put somebody in their path or that God give them, a, give them an open vision, God. Show them hell. <laughs> pray that prayer. God, show it to them. <laughs> but all your little, your little con games and playing all these Mind games, uh-uh. God say, I know how to save to the utmost. I just I just need you to be sweet. Stop raging and acting a fool. <laughs> Here you trying to get them saved and you sitting up smoking cigarettes. You trying to get them saved and you still walking around dressed like a harlot. You still trying to, quote, get them saved and you still cussing like a sailor. Uh-uh, ain't going to be no salvation because you need to get yours, yours straight. Let it be your conversation. Do you feel me, my friend? Number five, last but not least, when you know it's in your power to help your brother or sister, that could be your son, whoever, and you're trying to punish them by withholding money, withholding any provision, because you got that ought in your heart, you got that root of bitterness in there, and you withhold helping them. Shame on you, my friend. You practicing witchcraft. We do not devise plans and schemes to punish anybody. And here's what I tell us all in closing, my friend. At the end of the day, God has given us a way of escape through the shed blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He said, I got a plan. And if God, my friend, is willing to forgive us, we must forgive. And you have to practice this daily. Choose your battles. And, and I had to confess myself over the years, Sharon, you petty. You need to stop. <laughs> I had to tell my crazy self, stop. You tripping. <laughs> I had to admit, you girl, shut up. Sometimes you just have to tell yourself, shut up, Sharon. Oh, yeah, you got to tell yourself, shut up. You was talking crap. Shut up. And use the blood. Say, God, this how you get this how you stop dealing with all this petty stuff. You first say, I'm being shut up. I'm being prideful. This ain't even that serious to make no fight out of it. And then you say, Lord, forgive me. I don't want to be thinking like that. That's petty. And keep it moving. But if it's something that you can't shake, that's when you go to your neighbor. And just say, sister, girl, I ain't like how you said that. And even if you use a little humor to help you get it out. If it's something worth going, because when I'm when I'm upset, y'all, so Sharon released the beast. <laughs> I'm going to tell you. Especially if it's something I think is just vile. And I'm thinking, how dare you? Oh, I'm going to speak my peace. And what you find, my friend, sometimes we got to go back and do a little cleanup because we might, you know, you can't be using this weak, lame excuse. They ain't going to receive it. People that say they ain't going to receive it, if that's you, I'm going to tell you what's really happening. That's the spirit of fear. That's a coward spirit. 
Oh, you got to admit that too. I'm a coward. If you ain't go admit I'm a coward, anytime you're constantly trying to predict how another person is going to respond to what Jesus tells us to do, and now you're going to explain it away, he ain't going to receive it. No, that's weakness. That's that, that's that jelly back. And remember who we are. Come on, soldier. We're soldiers in the army of God. We are soldiers. Amen. And you got to be able to handle psychological warfare to get out of boot camp, my friend. You got to be able to take those mental hits. Do you feel what I'm saying to you? You got to be able to go through your thoughts and say, I reject that. That's petty. I'm moving. I love you, sis. Come give me a hug. And some of you sisters, y'all owe your husband some apologies. And some of you brothers, you so far behind, you can't remember the last time you bought the sister some fresh flowers. Don't nobody want no flowers on Valentine's Day. We don't even celebrate Valentine's Day. Don't nobody want no flowers on Mother's Day. We want some flowers every week. Sure. And, and, and let the sister say, amen. That's right. You is so far behind, brothers. You need to be... Well, you know, she ain't doing this and she ain't doing that. You keep bringing them gifts home on a regular basis. And if you got a financial problem, that ain't no problem, brother. Write her some handmade, handwritten notes. Oh, that sister be singing your praises for the next. Th I'm just trying to help you get out the doghouse. <laughs> All right. I love you, my friends. We lift up holy hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, we reject feelings of bitterness. We pray, Father, that you will root out of our hearts anything that's hiding in our hearts, that we're about to take the trash out, Father. We're not holding on to anything that will separate us from you. We're not holding on to anything that will cause our hearts to be filled with bitterness. Father, we want the joy of the Lord as our strength. We want to be able to feel your peace, your joy anchoring our souls as we journey through this earth, through this life, through this time that you have allotted for us to be in this body suit. We want to be victorious. We choose to forgive. We choose not to hold offense. And Father, we pray for these marriages where the men and the women has been have been playing all these psychological games with each other. Father, we, we, we say to you that it's over. We will be bold, we will be strong, and we will obey what you say. We will be doers and not just hearers of this gospel. In Jesus' name we pray, and we thank you for forgiveness. We thank you that you love us, Father. We are your children, and we choose to obey. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, my friend. Till next time, take the trash out. <laughs> I love you, my friend. Till next time.